friends, welcome to our chapter reading. Today we are finishing up Toys Come Home by Emily Jenkins and the pictures are by Paul O. Zielinski. So we are in the last chapter, it's chapter six, and it is called The Arrival of Plastic and also The Reason We Are Here. Stingray and Lumpy are playing Hungry Hungry Hippos. The girl left it out on the rug last night, a game in which white marbles get eaten by plastic hippopotami. Each player hits a lever to make his or her hippo stretch out its neck and chomp a marble. Stingray is winning, game after game after game. Why is more marbles the best? wonders Lumpy. Shouldn't you stop eating when you're full? My hippo was full a long time ago. More marbles are best because it's winning, answers Stingray. It is winning though if my hippo overeats and gets a tummy ache. Hippos don't get tummy aches, says Stingray. Hippos think more is better because it's winning. My hippo's feeling sick, Lumpy says crossly. Feet sound on the stairs and Stingray and Lumpy stop playing and lie cutely on the floor. The toys can hardly believe it, but nearly a year has passed since Lumpy's arrival and today is the girl's birthday party. She's old enough now that her party is at a bowling alley, whatever that is. And when she comes in, she's wearing a special dress with ruffly lace at the bottom. She putters around the room, putting barrettes in her hair and looking at herself in the mirror. Lumpy wants to go to the party. He's never been to a party before and he thinks it sounds like something he would like a lot. He wonders if there will be dancing. Stingray wants to go to the party too. She wonders if there will be ruffly lace for her to wear. Honey, the mom calls up the stairs. Time to go. The girl grabs Stingray and Lumpy and shoves them into a backpack. It smells like, like what? Stingray thinks it smells like sour milk. Lumpy thinks it smells like pencil shavings. Sour milk, no pencil shavings. Sour milk, no pencil shavings. Lumpy nips Stingray's flush, plush flipper with his buffalo teeth. Stingray pokes Lumpy in the eye with the tip of her tail. Ba ba boom The backpack goes down the stairs. Whoosh! It swings out the door and plunk drops into the trunk of the car. Maybe we shouldn't play that hippo game together anymore, says Lumpy, feeling sorry and sick to his stomach. It makes me cranky. I think it makes you cranky too. Bowling will be better. We should definitely bowl. Their quarrel over, Stingray wraps her tail around Lumpy's middle. They wait out the car ride together. Hey, says Lumpy as the car engine turns off. What's bowling again? Bowling is, uh, Stingray pauses for a moment because she wants to give Lumpy an answer, wants to feel important and helpful, but doesn't actually know. Bowling is when everybody drinks ginger ale from bowls instead of cups, she says eventually, and wears bowls on their heads, kind of like hats, and has their hair cut in the shape of bowls. They all play drums with chopsticks on the bowls on each other's head. Bowling is also when there are especially big bowls filled with warm, soapy water and people wash their feet in them which is a good thing to do at a birthday party because then everybody has really smelly feet. So now they'll have clean feet after, plus new haircuts. So they all feel fresh and nobody's ever thirsty because of all the bowls of ginger ale. Okay, says Lumpy, let's definitely do that. Definitely. Although not the washing part. No, says Stingray. Or the haircuts. Not the haircuts either, just the hats and the drumming. Exactly, says Lumpy. At the bowling alley, the girl opens the backpack and swings Lumpy and Stingray by their tails as the parents greet guests. When everyone is there, the children all change shoes and take turns standing in front of a long wooden pathway, rolling heavy round objects, kind of like giant marbles, toward groups of wooden bottles. The adults yell, strike and spare and not the gutter, not the gutter. A few of the children cry. Lumpy and Stingray sit on a pile of jackets and watch. Lumpy wonders where the bowls of warm soapy water and ginger ale are, but he doesn't say anything. Instead, he asks in a whisper, what's the point with the round things and the bottles? What's the point? Winning, says Stingray. How do you win? Stingray doesn't know, but she's embarrassed about the lack of soapy water and ginger ale and doesn't want Lumpy to lose faith in her. Whoever's got the most round things, she answers with false confidence. But isn't everyone sharing round things? No. Oh, says Lumpy. I thought they were because, um, they're sharing them. See? The girl is using the same one the boy with the red hair used. They only look like they're sharing them, explains Stingray. It's a very complicated thing that's going on. I still don't see the point, says Lumpy. 
When the rolling of round things is done, everyone moves to a room in the back of the building where they eat pizza and then chocolate peanut butter birthday cake with frosting roses. The girl opens her presents in a flurry of colored paper and curls of ribbon. Will there be a new friend in there? Lumpy asks Stingray. How should I know? I thought you knew almost everything, the buffalo says mildly. Oh, Stingray is pleased. Well, thank you for noticing, but I can't predict the future. The girl unwraps a game called Uncle Wiggly, two Barbie dolls with blank motionless faces, several glittery Barbie dresses, and a shiny pink box to keep them in, markers, a beading kit, and a nightgown. Nobody, says Lumpy forlornly. Nobody, echoes Stingray. Lumpy thinks maybe now there will be hats and haircuts and the drumming and the washing of feet, but no. Some people have seconds on cake, some people are playing with the discarded ribbon, and some people are jumping in their seats and yelling. And then the party's over. Each kid gets a paper goodie bag to take home. Children pull out swirly lollipops, sticker books, and red bouncy round things. The girl gets a goodie bag too, even though she's the hostess. When they leave the bowling alley, she shoves it into the backpack along with Lumpy and Stingray. Once they're in the trunk of the car, the round thing in the goodie bag starts to wiggle and roll a tiny bit. Boing, boing. It even bounces, tight, small bounces inside the bag. Every time it moves, it's making a papery, crinkling thump. Boing, boing, crackle. Crackle, boing, boing, boing. It appears the round thing is somebody. Not nobody after all. It will not stop bouncing and wiggling and trying to roll inside the paper bag, inside the backpack, inside the trunk of the car. Excuse me, says Stingray finally. Lumpy is sick to his stomach and doesn't feel like talking. Excuse me, but you're bonking us in here. There's not enough room for you to be so hyper. Good morning, cries the round thing. It's afternoon. Good afternoon. Don't feel bad you missed the party, says Stingray kindly. It doesn't really matter. Party, 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 says the round thing, spinning in place. No, you miss the party, says Stingray, but don't feel bad. Isn't this a party? The thing asks. No. But isn't a party when three or more people have a good time together? I don't really know, but somehow I think that's what a party is. Uh, I suppose so, yes. Then it's a party, cries the thing. One person, me. Two person, the large guy with the legs I can feel over on my left. Buffalo. And three person, you, you nice, soft, plushy marine animal, says Stingray. Mammal, cries the thing. And we're all here together having an excellent time. Party, party, party. Not mammal, fish, corrects Stingray. It's my first party, says the round thing, bouncing softly. Lucky me. The girl tries several names for the round thing. Maria, no. Lop Lop, no. Snickers? No. Plastic. The girl says it over and over as if she likes the sound. How about Penny? Says the mother, short for Penelope. No plastic, says the girl. Penny's a real name, but it's also cute. And pennies are round, continues the mom as if she hasn't heard. Plastic. The girl plants a kiss on the round thing's flat red surface. And the name sticks. For the next several days, the girl spends a lot of time throwing plastic toward the ceiling and catching her again. Blop, blop. Plastic actually seems to like it. When she's not being thrown in the air or rolled across the room, and when the girl has gone to school and the toys have the house to themselves all morning, Plastic spends her time looking through the books on the shelves. Lumpy or the toy mice get them down for her, and she reads rather quickly, even if she doesn't understand all the words. What is a croissant? She asked Stingray one day. A kind of monster. Oh, okay, and what is a snickerdoodle? Another kind of monster. Okay, Plastic reads on. Stingray and Lumpy are looking out the window at the, next, at the guy next door raking leaves in his yard. Why is the sky blue? Asked Plastic after a few minutes. Blue's the best color, says Stingray. Why? Why is it the best color? Plastic leaves her book and bounces up to rest near her friends on the windowsill. It just always has been. Why do we call it blue? Because it sounds like blue, as in I blew out the candles. Stingray rears up to explain better. And everybody knows that wind is blue and breath is blue. If you were painting them in a painting, you'd paint them blue. Or gray, says Lumpy. If you wanted it to be right, you'd paint them blue, says Stingray. And why are we here, says Plastic. That's the thing I really need to know. What do you mean, why are we here, Stingray asks. 
Why are we here in the girls' room in this town on this planet? Explains Plastic. Stingray doesn't know what to say. Plastic bounces expectantly. I thought you would know. We, we, Stingray still can't reply. The toys are waiting for an answer. I'll tell you later, says Stingray st finally. Right now, I have some important stuff to do. Why'd you have to ask that, Plastic? It makes my head hurt thinking about it, moans Lumpy. Sorry. Plastic rolls around him apolo apolo apologetically. <laughs> Stingray's head hurts too, but she doesn't mention it. Here's a picture of them. You can see Plastic reading a book. And then Stingray and Lumpy are sitting up on the windowsill. That night, Lumpy can't sleep. His eyes feel sore and heavy, but he keeps thinking about the question Plastic asked. Why are we here, in the girls' room, in this town, on this planet? Lumpy doesn't know, and he can tell that Stingray doesn't know, which is pretty worrying because Stingray knows nearly everything. Lumpy's eyes stay open all night. The next morning, when the people are away at work and school, Plastic starts asking questions again. What's a robot? Something that's not alive but seems alive, answers Stingray. Plastic thinks this answer over. Are we robots? She asks finally. Certainly not. Stingray is pretty sure. And how come we're here again? Plastic asks. I forgot what you said yesterday. Stop asking that, Lumpy barks. Stop asking how come. Stop asking why. You're making my head hurt again. Plastic stops like she did before, but she asks again the next day and the next she really is trying not to ask. She honestly is, but she just wants to know. So, so badly. Evening after evening, the question pops out. Why are we here? Then, night after night, Lumpy cannot sleep. Wondering, wondering, why is he here? Why any of them are here? Why the mice are here? The girl, Stingray, sheep, plastic, the rocking horse. It's scary that Stingray doesn't know and scary that there might not be an answer at all. One Saturday night, Stingray wakes at 2 a.m. The girl is breathing deeply in sleep and the rest of the room is dark and quiet, just like it always is. But something is different. Stingray looks around. The one-eared sheep is asleep under the rocking horse. Plastic is quiet on the windowsill, but Lumpy is not on the shelf. Stingray scans the room. Lumpy's not on the carpet, not in the corner, not anywhere. Bunk. Stingray hits the floor. She has a bad feeling about this. Boing. Plastic follows her. She never sleeps very heavily. Together, they scoot down the hall and peek into the grown-up bedroom. Nothing. Silently, they inch to the top of the stairs. The television is on down in the living room. Fwop, gobble gobble Fwop, gobble gobble Boing, boing, boing. Fwop, gobble gobble Monk. Stingray and Plastic go downstairs. All the lights in the living room are on. Lumpy is sitting very close to the television with a dazed look on his face. No TV at night, Stingray chides him. You could wake the people. No TV and no lights. You know that. I needed it, Lumpy, Lumpy moans. I need the light. I need the TV. How come? Plastic wants to know. Dread, says Lumpy. I have dread. What's that? Plastic is feeling rather bouncy now that she's fully awake. She zooms around the living room. It has to do with too much dark and not knowing why we're here and not sleeping, says Lumpy. I just need the light really bad. You have to turn it off, says Stingray with an authority. I'll get you a flashlight. Plastic bounces herself at the light switches and then at the television. The TV goes off and the room falls into darkness. Stingray rummages in a kitchen drawer she knows about, bringing back a large red flashlight and flipping it on. They all three sit there, looking at the beam of the flashlight playing against the wall. Still dread, says Lumpy. Dread and more dread. How about another flashlight? Stingray rushes back to the drawer and brings another. Lumpy turns it on. He stares at the pool of light it makes, darker and yellower than the one made by the other flashlight. Still dread, he says after a while. Look at my shadow, says Plastic. She bounces across the beams of light. Look at me go. Hey, do you know why shadows get bigger and smaller? Why do shadows get bigger and smaller? Why are we here, moans Lumpy. You should go upstairs to bed, says Stingray. I think you're really tired. I can't sleep, says Lumpy. I can't sleep for all the wondering. Stingray is quite tired herself. 
She's used to sleeping all night with the girl, but she will not leave her friend when he needs her. Come with me, she tells him. There's a light in the linen closet. The people will never notice it's on. You can lie in there with the towels and sheets and things. She leads the way, even though she's a little nervous about the mean towel club that Bobby Dot mentioned so long ago. She's never spoken with any towel but Tuck Tuck, but Stingray knows that the purple grown-up towels inhabit both the adult bathroom and the linen closet at the far end of the hall. She squashes down her fear and lurches up the stairs, pushing with her tail, plastic and lumpy follow. When they get to the closet, Stingray slides one flipper underneath the door and pulls sharply. It pops open and Plastic bounces herself at the light switch inside. Sleeping, sleeping, sleeping. A chorus of purple towels stacked neatly one on top of the other sits on a low shelf. Higher up are sheets, pillowcases, boxes of tissues, and rolls of toilet paper. Hello, cries Plastic. How's it going in there? Sleeping, sleeping, sleeping. Sorry to wake you, says Stingray without introducing herself, but my friend here has dread. Sleeping, sleeping, sleeping. He wants to sleep. We all want to sleep, explains Stingray, but he's scared of the dark. We've come here so he can have light without waking the people. Must you have the light on? Asks the towel on the top of the pile. It's terry cloth corner waggles in irritation. Yes, we must, snaps Stingray. I just told you he has to have light. The whole reason he came in here was for the light. I need light because I have dread, says Lumpy, turning around three times before lying down in the corner of the closet. Plastic rolls over and tucks her body into the curve of Lumpy's buffalo stomach. She hums quietly. Dum da dum dum da dum dum da da dum 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 da da dum. Do you know the words to that song? asks Lumpy. Plastic does not. I don't think it has words, she says. I think it's just a hum. Oh please, everyone knows the words to that on says the towel on top. True, I know them, says another towel. So do I. So do I. All the towels agree. What are they? Plastic wants to know. Oh, the more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. The towels' voices merge in silky harmony, not loud enough to wake the people, but loud enough to fill the small bright linen closet with music. Party, 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 says Plastic. Cause your friends are my friends and my friends are your friends. So the more we get together, the happier we'll be. The second time around, Plastic and Stingray join in. As she sings, Stingray scoots over to Lumpy and taps him gently on the tip of her tail. Lumpy, she whispers as the towels stop singing and begin an argument as to whether they should next do Goodnight Irene or Michael Row the Boat Ashore. Yes, the buffalo is calm now but his eyes are still wide open and his mouth is twisted in anxiety. I figured out the answer, says Stingray, to Plastic's question. You did? asks Lumpy. You did? asks Plastic. Yes, says Stingray proudly. What is it? asks Lumpy. Why are we here? asks Plastic. We are here, says Stingray, for each other. Oh, of course we are. Of course we're here for each other. For each other, for each other, cries Plastic, bouncing up. You found the answer! Lumpy feels the agony and the tension rush out of his buffalo body. We are here for each other. Stingray's right. The toys have been here for each other, and they will be. The dread is gone. Stingray tucks herself up against Lumpy, tummy touching tail. The two of them watch Plastic roll happily in circles. You can turn the light off now, says Lumpy. I think I can sleep. So Plastic bounces the light switch and comes to rest on Lumpy's head. The towels sing, Hallelujah! And the toys are there for each other, in the bottom of the linen closet, at the end of the hallway, in the girl's house, in the night, in the town, on the continent, on the planet, in the universe, together. And there's a picture of them sleeping together in the linen closet. And that is the end of Toys Come Home. I'll see you guys next time for our next book. Bye.